everyone. Today we are looking at some fantastic paint markers. Now these markers come from the same people, Karen, who do the beautiful brush marker pro pens. So we're going to be comparing them as well to see uh, how different they are. But these ones today are the pigment deco brush and these contain an acrylic like ink. It's a paint um, that's pigment based and it's opaque and it works just like acrylic paint, so it's permanent when dry, etc, etc. I'll explain all that later. But these are really, really good for the calligraphy market. So if you are doing calligraphy or hand lettering and stuff like that, these are brilliant. And that's what I've seen them mostly used for. But they can be used in colouring books. They can be used on all sorts of surfaces, which we will get into. So I just want to show you the box first of all. I have had to zoom out as much as possible to get this whole box in frame. So... This is the master set and they do come in individual sets and other smaller sets as well. So you don't have to get the whole lot, uh, but this is the most that you can get. And there are 84 colours in total. So the box is just beautiful for packaging. I mean, you can see the front of the box here has got all of the names of the collections on it. There's seven collections in this master set. We've got basic, passion, violet blue, nature, nude, grey and pastel. And they're all in their individual boxes and you can see all of the colours swatched on the front. So it's easy pickings if you're looking for a particular shade. And I'll just try and get the whole box in view so you can see what it's like. So I don't know what that is, ignore that. <laughs> so you've got the sides, you've got the back of the box and then they're all falling out of the front. So you've got to keep it straight. And there is a particular reason as well why they have put the pens in this type of packaging. And I'll show you that now. So first thing is you've got this little leaflet that comes with it and it's called the One Marker Multi-Surface Art Pigment Deco Brush, I guess manual. <laughs> uh, it just tells you a little bit about them on the back. So the things that they can be used on and how they're similar to acrylic paint. But obviously you've got more control and things like that because they're in a pen. And then you've just got all the info that you could possibly need about how to create blends, tip to tip blends. Um, and how to wash the tips off, how to get them going again if they seem to go a bit dry and most importantly how to store them which is what I was going to come on to now. So you can see on this here that they are meant to be stored tilted at a slight angle down toward the nib and that is how they have designed the storage. So if you do decide to keep them in the storage, which why wouldn't you, it's beautiful, um, that has already been done for you. So I'm going to open up one of the boxes just ignore that for now and here are the pens in the basic collection now it's quite difficult to show you but <laughs> these pens are actually at an angle facing the tip toward the bottom so the foam the dense foam that they've put in between the pens here is angled so if you keep your pens in this position horizontally all the time they are going to be constantly angled at that position where they need to be to keep the tips nice and wet so that they don't go dry on you and you've got to go through the whole rigmarole of dipping them in water and you know keep scribbling them out until they get the paint back through the nib so really really well thought out and designed packaging that's very very practical for the markers so let's have a look at the actual box that each set comes in so it's a magnetized very thick card box again really really beautiful quality and then when you open it up Oh, this blooming wire keeps going down. <laughs> Sorry about that. When you open it up, um, you've got a, a swatch card that's built into the top of the box. And this shows you all of the different colour names that are within this set. And it gives you the chance to swatch them very quickly on white and black just to see what they look like. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more on this because the more I zoom out, the less clarity I've got on this. So if I zoom you right into 1%, or one times, whatever, you should get more clarity now, hopefully. Um, so you can see all the colour names. You can see a quick demonstration of how to um, keep them horizontally and, you know, make sure that those caps are always pointing downwards. Very, very important. And then it's just saying that results might vary depending on the surface that you apply the markers to, because they are multi-surface markers. Uh, but you've got a bit of a representation here of what they're going to look like on white and black. Moreover, they also include a customization kit leaflet, pamphlet. It's not even a leaflet, is it? It's just a piece of card, um, which allows you to swap and change the markers between the boxes 
and you know so maybe maybe you want to have your favorite colors in one box the colors that you use the most if you're a calligrapher if you do hand lettering and you use a particular set of colors all the time you want to keep those together you can take these labels they're already adhesive take them put them on the front of each box color in the swatches and put those along this part of the box and then you've also got these that you can stick on the inside of the box and you can put you know whatever color whatever colors you want to keep together together so hopefully that makes sense you know how brilliant i'm at explaining things <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's all been designed with the user in mind and it's really, really um, impressive how they've done this. So let's have a look at the actual pens themselves. I'm going to get all of these out of the way. We can have a look at all the colours. We can have a look at the nibs. We can have a look at how they perform. OK, so I've prepared some white and black paper for us to test these out on, see the opacity, etc. Uh, but first of all, I just want to show you the pens themselves. So I'm going to get one out. Let's go for this lovely pink. And this is what it looks like. So it's the Karin Pigment Deco brush. You've got all your branding on there. Then underneath it says it's an opaque colour system with permanent ink and a colour burst effect, which I'm not sure what that means. Um, Water-based, non-toxic, suitable for most surfaces with a flexible brush tip. And then it tells you to shake before use, store them horizontally and cap after use as well. Now the shaking before use is really, really important and integral to using these pens because... The paint inside, you know, if they're left alone, it's going to uh, sink to the bottom. You might be able to see here that it's just not quite mixed properly. And that is why we need to give them a real good old shake before we use them. And if you think you've shaken them enough, shake them a little bit more. I think the more you shake, the, um, the thicker and the more opaque the paint comes out onto the page. So if you're colouring along with these and you feel like the opacity has gone down a bit, Give it a good old shake and try again. Make sure you keep your cap on so you don't get a massive spray of paint everywhere. So that's a really, really good shake. And then you can see that that has disappeared, that effect there of the paint sort of separating. So we've got nice acrylic paint now ready to use. You've got the paint number and the paint name. And we've got a barcode. I think that's it. These are made in Poland. Um, so let's have a look at the tip. So just pull these open and this is what you see here. So these are exactly the same nibs as the Karin, what are they called? Brush Marker Pro, which are their water-based line. And again, I will compare those in a moment. But now you've seen the brush, it's a beautiful, thick, uh, I think it's a nylon brush. And it's made to stand up to use on rough surfaces. So obviously, you know, after a lot of use, I can imagine the tip will get a bit rough but it is made to be put on things like wood metal cardboard uh, plastic things like that so you know i think it can take a bit of a battering let's swatch these colors so i'm going to start from the top and you know what would be a good idea is to close the box and give the box a good old shake before we do it so that's what i'm going to do off camera you can probably hear that i'm giving them a good old shake Hopefully that will be just as good as doing it individually, seeing as we're swatching out the whole box. This is the basic colours still. OK, so let's go with the white. I'm just going to give it a quick shake because I do want to make sure we get, you know, the maximum opacity. Now on white, obviously, you're not going to see much at all, are you really? But let's have a look at you on black. So there we go. There is your white. Now, I think that's going quite transparent. I mean, it's still, obviously, you can see it, but I am going to give it a bit more of a shake. I think that that is, like, the number one tip with these markers. Shake, 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 and shake again, especially if you're having trouble with the opacity. So let's give it a go now. Much better. Can you see the difference straight away? So definitely shaken, not stirred, <laughs> is needed for these. So... Let's keep going through the colours. I'm going to try and do this quite quickly because I don't want to bore you swatching out colours. And I am going to, I'm getting out of breath just from, sat, you know, sitting here doing this. So that is a testament to exactly how unfit I am. <laughs> but at least it's a good arm workout, you know, if you don't get to the gym, you can just sit here shaking your deco brushes. Okay, so this is a yellow. It's actually called Canary. 
Let's do it on the white. Oh, beautiful. Very, very juicy as well. Lots and lots of paint output on these. Let's have a go on the black. Lovely. Again, you know, the more you sort of press, the more of an opaque finish you're going to get as well because you're pressing the nib so you're releasing more of the paint. So we've got orange, bright orange this one. Beautiful vibrant colours, really is. And see if we can get that bit more opaque. There we are. So obviously I'm using paper, which is a porous surface. But I think if you were trying these on something non-porous, like plastic, um, a glass, something like that, then you're not going to get the colour show through underneath because it's not soaking the, the ink in, the paint in. So it'll be even more vibrant and even more opaque, I should think, on those kind of surfaces. There we go. Next colour, and I'm not going to do this with the whole box because I realise you'll be asleep by the end, is Henna. So we've got a lovely brown. And this basic colour set is what it says on the tin. You've got some greens, you've got some blues, purple, pink, red, orange, yellow, and a black and a white. So everything that you need. So, I mean, if you do do lots of lettering and things like that, but you're just using basic colours, this one is a great set because you've got one of everything. So even, even this dark paper and this dark colour... It's showing up quite well. Hopefully the camera's showing that. Yeah, just about. And then we've got that pink that we got out at first. Which is simply called pink. Oh, press that one a bit hard. <laughs> Let's give it another little shake. There we go. You can just see just from that sh that one shake how much of a difference it made. So it really does pay to sit here giving your arms a workout. This one's called True Blue. I don't think I'm going to have enough room on the side of this card to do the rest, am I? a gorgeous blue then we have aubergine so this is the one purple tone that's in this box of basic colors but we do have a whole range of purples that come in the other collections which i'll show you in a moment oh that's beautiful I'm just going to have to move to the side for this. So we've got grass. I'll just do that over here and you'll be able to see the difference. So again, opacity not brilliant on that. So I want to shake it a bit more. There we are. You see? Then we have what looks a bit more like a blue green, but it does just say green. So maybe it doesn't have any teal tone to it, but it just looks as if it did. <laughs> I can imagine how this looks on the camera. I can't see it at the moment, but oh yeah. So that, that really is, it's a beautiful emerald color actually. A bit more of a shape before we go into the black. Yeah. Don't even need to shape that anymore. Am I still on camera here? Let me move you up a bit. There we go. Then we have turquoise. Oh, 
Ooh, this is very deep turquoise. I was expecting something a bit brighter than that. I don't know why, because it is quite a good colour match to the cap. But when you hear the word turquoise, I think you expect a really bold, bright and vibrant colour, don't you? And this is quite a deep, almost a teal. I don't know why I'm doing it once there and twice there. What's going on? Finally, we've got the black. So you see, even on the black card, really, really nice. Um, yeah, so that is the basic set swatched out on the white and the black. You can see that some of the colours have dried and they're still maintaining the opacity that was put down, you know, when I give it a, a better shake and, and we put it down again. So yeah, white and black test on the basic colours. Now what I want to do is show you one of the original Karin markers. This is the water-based brush marker pro. This one's lilac and I just want to show you the difference. So I'm going to give it a good shake because even though it's not paint, we should just still give it a shake to make it fair. <laughs> And then let's see how different it is. So if I put this one down here, really, really nice colour payout. But you can just tell, you obviously you can tell it's not the same material that is coming out of the pigment markers. It feels a lot thinner um, and it's not as juicy. So it's, yeah. But if we try it on the black, this is where you're going to see the difference. So say I do it down here next to the purple because it's a similar colour you can see it just simply looks wet and then when it dries you can not really see anything at all you can't tell that it's a color uh, whereas here you can see that this is clearly a purple so yeah that's how you know how different they are this is you've got the opacity of for example a posca marker posca pen with your pigments and then with the water-based ones you don't really have that same clarity on dark surfaces and of course the paints can be used on a multitude of different things whereas the original water-based ones are made for paper all right so let's have a look at all of the colors in the set because i bet you're dying to see all of these 84 different shades that are available which is actually a really good number for paint pens if you think about it good number of colors so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get out each of these swatches that I've already done and then you'll be able to see. So I'm just going to show you very quickly, depends what they look like in the box for each set. And then we'll leave these out so we can see the colours. So that box, what was that one called? That was the passion colours. So you've got beautiful, juicy, vibrant reds, oranges and some purple in there as well. And I really love this sulphur yellow. It's like a chartreuse colour. This next one is the Violet Blue Collection. And there are all of the markers. So it's all your blues and some purples as well. It's that kind of side of the colour wheel. Um, there's no warm reds or orangey tones in there, no greens or anything like that. It's all blue and purple. So there are the swatches of that. Next up, we've got Nature Colours. This is really cool. It looks really, really nature inspired and quite camouflagey. So the nature colours are what you would expect uh, them to be. Lots of very autumnal colours here. So we've got burnt oranges, browns and greens as well. There's the swatches. Then we have nude colours, which are really, really good for skin, if that's what you're planning on doing, or, you know, any kind of nude project Um where you will need these lighter colours. And these are the colours you can see. Really like this salmon pink. It's an unusual colour between a sort of red and a pink with some orange put in there as well. And there are the colours. Second to last box is the greys. So let's see what greys we've got in here. Funnily enough, we've actually got some greens. So these are the markers you get and these are the colours. If we just have a quick look at those. We've got a green called curry down here, an olive green and an olive black, which is a very, very dark, dark green. Um, and I don't really know why they've put that in the greys, maybe because they are quite tonal. Uh, I don't know. But we've got three natural, three warm and three cool. Here goes the blooming wire again. 
And then finally, we have the pastel set, which I'm sure loads of you will appreciate because pastel colours are just lovely to look at, aren't they? Just look at them in the box, they look like little sweets. And there are the colours. Particularly love this pastel green here. Just beautiful. So I didn't really shake these um, much <laughs> when I was doing these swatches, which is why they don't look really very opaque compared to the ones we've just done. I think I was rushing them a little bit. But now that we've got all the colour swatches out, we can have a proper good look. So let's start with those pastels. So we've got a lovely pastel yellow, which I think will be a really nice colour to use because you don't often get pastel yellow in marker sets. We've got a couple of pastel oranges that are very, very similar. And that's just one thing that I would say is that a couple of these colours are maybe there could have been a shade or two between them. A bit too similar, those for me. I think they would have been good putting in a different colour. Uh, we've got some green. So we've got a light green and a pastel green. Um, I would say that the pastel green has a lot of blue, whereas the light green is almost like a true green. Then we've got one blue on its own and a couple of pinks so this is actually a lilac it's got some um purple in there and the two pinks are quite distinct this one is more of a dusky pink whereas this one's quite bright and then you've got a third even more dusky pink which they've called pastel red and a couple of violet blues so that's your pastel set this is the nude tones which we just saw um Again, if you are doing skin or something like that, this will be the set that you want to get predominantly. You've got a really deep dark brown um, and then it just comes up, you know, in the colour wheel throughout all of the uh, different tones of brown until you get to your peaches and your pinks. So really nice set there. I would say again, though, quickly, that the almond and the blush are just too similar. We needed a different colour there. Um, I think the other ones are all right. But yeah, I would say different colour for those. We have the, what were these? The nature colours, it says it down here, look. And these are all stickers so that you can take these off and put them in your box or in your swatch book or anything that you, um, anything that you use to swatch or record your colours. You can use these stickers or you can use them to customise the boxes, like I said earlier. So nature colours, we've got lime green, apple and leaf green. These are quite different Um you can tell that this is definitely darker. But these two, again, really not that much in it, Karen. Um, again, with these two, I think golden amber, you can see that it's slightly darker, this one, but not, not by a long chalk, really. Uh, we've got a peach and a mango, and then we've got cocoa, cinnamon, and copper brown. So just to compare the cocoa and the sepia from the previous one, the sepia is a lot cooler. The cocoa is a lot warmer. Um, but you know they are definitely on the same sort of on the same sort of range of brown but yeah maybe they could have just thought about their choices a little bit better uh, when it came to the shades because i think this one is the most predominant one for shades that look the same so this is the violet blue set uh, the cool aqua and the duck egg despite being quite similar do have a distinct difference in tone so that's okay again it might look different to the camera than it looks to my eyes so i can only tell you how it looks in real life then we've got these blues here, which are pretty much the Aegean, the light azure and the azure, pretty much the same colour. I mean, if you, if you compare them, you can see this one's lighter, but very, very similar, as are these here, the royal blue and the indigo blue. Sapphire blue's got a bit of a different tone to it. That one's, yeah, it's more of a blue, whether this, whereas these have a lot of purple and ultramarine in there. Uh, purples are all quite distinct. I do like this lilac. It's a very much a plum colour. So that's quite nice. Let's have a look at the greys. So as I mentioned, we've got the neutral greys, warm greys and cool greys. But just looking at these, I don't know as if there's enough of a tonal difference between them. Um, so usually, say if I'm colouring with Prismacolors, I would use a cool grey 20% a cool grey 50% and a cool grey 70%. And those are really, really distinct because we're missing out colours in between. I think that there's not been enough of that distinction between these colours here. And again, here on the cool greys. And even the warm greys look quite similar to one another, to be honest. Um, and yeah, this inclusion of these colours here at the bottom, these greens, while I do appreciate that they've put them in the greys because they are, again, quite deep, they're quite tonal, um, I don't know, it just seems a little bit out of place. This is the Passion Colours. 
beautiful set so we've got our reds um yeah quite different to one another i'm just looking very quickly to see that we don't have any similar colors no i'm pretty pleased with that passion set is a good one and then we've got the basic which you saw me swatch out and they're all different because they're all basic colors so i would say that depending on what it is that you're wanting to color with these if you're wanting to get the most amount of colors out of your money i would definitely go for a basic if you can the passion is a really good addition onto that because they are all quite different grays unless you want grays i wouldn't bother blues i mean i'm not even sure if you can get these single i will look and i'll put it on the screen now when i edit the video if you can get them single that would be brilliant because you can just cut out all of these similar colors but with the violet blue box i would say that these colours are just far too close to one another and I would stick with, um, where do we have blues in this? Oh, we don't actually. Hmm. If you're wanting blues, you would have to get this one, wouldn't you really? Because we've only got the pastel and the one that's in the basic. Uh, but yeah, not a good box for, for different colours, that one. Pastels are beautiful. Um, skin, again, the nude colours, that will be for people that definitely want to use that for that kind of colouring. Uh, the nature colours are lovely, but I think if you go back again to the original colours, the basic set, you've got your orange, you've got a red, you've got a brown, so, and you've got green, obviously. So really, it's up to you. If you've got FSS like me, which is full set syndrome, <laughs> you will want the lot, um, just to give you that extra bit of um, choice. But, you know, I would say definitely get yourself a set of the bright colours if you can and the pastels are gorgeous they're quite distinct but I think I'll probably also get a passion box because I love that sulfur yellow and you do have different pinks and things in there as well so yeah that's all of the colours I hope I've explained them and demonstrated them quite well now um let's see where I've used them in colouring books because I bet that's what you're dying to see as well I did um, some of the embellishments on this, which is Kelly O'Gorman's 2022 colouring calendar. Did some of the embellishments with the Karen Deco brushes. A couple of places I've done Posca, but mostly it was the Karen. And I'll just show you close up actually, because it might be easier to see. I coloured this in pencil and then a lot of the detail was lost. So that's where I came in with the pigment markers and just dotted them over. And because it's akin to acrylic paint, it was very opaque, it didn't sink into the paper and you can see you've got a bit of detail around these flowers here. And I didn't have to go in with pencil and colour every individual flower, just dotted them on and I think it's really nice and effective. So you can use them most of all for embellishing. I would not use these for colouring a whole piece, just wouldn't. Um, I, I don't think that's what they're for. I don't feel like you would get the best out of them that way. I think you'd use them up pretty quickly. And um, I think they are definitely better to use just like you would use a Posca pen for embellishments and for using on different surfaces. Speaking of, we need to try some surfaces, don't we? So here we've got a bit of metal. Let me grab one of the pens. Let's go for this one. So this is out of the Violet Blue set and it's called Cool Aqua. Let's give it a good old shake and it has got a ball of some sort in there that's going to mix up the paint as well okay so that's a good shake and let's see how it performs on this metal make sure we're zoomed in okay so we do have a really good opacity there the very edges of it have sort of been resisted a little bit by the metal but you can definitely see that it's showing up really really nicely that will dry permanent and it will be sort of touch proof but it won't be scrub proof now if you're wanting to do something like decorate a ceramic mug or something like that something non-porous and you want to set the paint onto the surface so that it doesn't scrub off you will need to use some sort of varnish or finish that you'll be able to get somewhere else on the market there's loads and loads of varnishes on Amazon if you look for um, things like ceramic varnish, ceramic, um, what do they call it? 
Is it the stuff that you brush on, it hardens and it will set what's underneath it and then you'll be absolutely fine. So that's how you do that. Um, just thinking if there's any other surfaces that I've got that I can show you while we're here. I think I've got some stone and some wood. So just bear with. Organised as ever. Right, there's some stone, there's some wood. We'll do the same colour, a bit more of a shake. There we are. So we've got our wood slice. I can't do calligraphy to save my life, so I don't really want to try. <laughs> but uh, colour uh, with. Right, so that's it on wood, which is obviously a naturally porous surface. And you can see it shows up beautifully on there. Really impressed with it on wood, actually. And then we've got the stone. So this again, porous. Let's give it a shake, put the cap on so we don't have a mess. And let's just do a quick flower on this stone. lovely <laughs> so you can see how they work on different surfaces they're showing up really really well and again they are permanent they're also uv and light resistant so they're not going to fade over time i don't know how much time i don't know the light fastness rating or anything like that but they are uv and light resistant so that's that now what cool tricks can we do with these pens what about how do they blend and things like that let's get our paper out and try and do some blending no idea where I've put anything. Here we go. So let's just do our white paper because that's what most of the people on this channel are going to be using them on. White paper for colouring pages and stuff like that. So let's say that we did want to do a bit of blending. Let's get a bit of a darker blue. So I've got this one here. This is light azure. I'm going to give that a good shake too. I think I could probably edit out about 20 minutes of this video just from shaking. <laughs> <clears throat> okay so let's try first of all just blending them on paper this is a watercolor stock so it should in theory work quite well that's quite dry that one i might have to shake that a bit more let's put this over the top give that another shake not too bad already really is it So we want it to come over this again, just add a little bit more ink and just faff about with that midpoint, blend it in a little bit more. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty impressed with that blend. To say that it's paint in a pen, you know, I thought you'd have to work a little bit harder than that. That's good. There are lots of different ways you can blend with these. You can do tip to tip. I'm going to get a different colour so that we're not just looking at blue all the time. Let's do a tip to tip blend with two completely opposite colours and see what that looks like. Let's get, let's get an orange, which I've just grabbed from the nature set. And what about a, let's do a yellow first of all, so that we can see that gradation from dark to light. I think orange and yellow, that kind of sunset colour looks quite nice when you blend them together. So the orange I've got here is called amber and the yellow is canary. Let's give them a hippie hippie shake. Oh, it's making me warm, I tell you. Um, then we're going to do a tip to tip. And I don't think it really matters much which one is on top, which one is on the bottom, because it's going to pick up... It's going to pick up the colour, whatever you do. So if we just tip these together, touch them together rather. And I think they'll both take on some of each other's colour. It's not like a chameleon marker, I don't think, where it's sort of infusing into the pen underneath. 
and we'll just see how, how they both work. So you can, don't worry about staining or anything like that, they will go back to their normal colours. So I'll touch those together for a minute. Let's first of all try the yellow. So we have got a bit of orange on there, but I think maybe should have stayed a little bit longer to have more of a blend. Let's go for the orange. Yeah, nothing there whatsoever. So I think what we need to do is we'll give them another shake. We will keep the yellow on the bottom because the orange clearly goes into the yellow better than the yellow soaks up into the orange. And then we'll keep them on for a little bit longer and see what that's like. It might even be worth just touching them sort of over and over again together to get that look. I, I know what I mean. I'll show you in a minute. I know I'm dead confusing. Haven't done a video in ages, you have to excuse me. <laughs> um, so what was I gonna do? So orange onto here. Now I'm just gonna leave those for a little while, see if we can get more of a colour payoff than that little bit that we got there. Oops. I don't know whether it's worth just touching them together like that because it seems to be staining the yellow a bit better than just leaving them together. Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got a bit more of orange on there. Still not an awful lot. Depending on the space that you need to colour, I suppose. But yeah, that one's just normal. Um, so what I was saying before, trying to explain, was to touch them together really quite quickly just to get an obvious bit of colour onto that lighter marker and then you know just doing it like this so that you've got a bit of colour on the tip and you can come back in and pick up some more colour and do yourself like some cute little flower effects like this something like that I don't know but yeah you can blend them um, tip to tip it just doesn't probably work as well as the next thing that I'm going to show you which is using a palette so I'm going to grab find it can't find my palette here we go Ooh. right so this is absolutely full of dirty colour so I'm just going to wipe off this central bit um now let's see, let's see if we can make a better difference doing it this way. So again, just a bit of a shake. I'm gonna scribble out some lovely juicy paint onto this ceramic plate. I'm then gonna pick it up with the yellow and see what happens. Wow. So this is far better, far better than the tip to tip. I think the tip to tip is great for things like this. But actually doing a gradient blend, use a palette, because look at that, gorgeous. And I wonder if we can also do the opposite and pick up the yellow with the orange and how that would look. This is all trial and error. Yeah, <laughs> I think it really only works from dark to light, at least in my limited testing. Uh, but that, that's fantastic when compared to this, isn't it? And I think if you went a little bit slower and made your strokes a little bit, um, had a bit more pressure on them, you probably wouldn't get so much streakiness either. Uh, you can also use a paintbrush to pick up your paint. Um, and we can do a bit of mixing as well. So, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm no good at this, am I really? I should have kitchen roll on hand and everything, but I don't. So let's do a bit of a mix. Let's say that we want to mix a red and a blue. So I'm going to pop some red down on here. This is a very pinky red. I don't know what it's called. Uh, red. <laughs> uh, let's see. So we've got red and let's put a blue on there as well. And essentially we should get purple. This is the true blue. Wonderful. And let's get ourselves a lovely paintbrush. I've got some water somewhere. Put some water on there. 
and let's mix them together and see what we get. So essentially we should, if colour theory is correct, get a purple out of this. Let's have a look. Ooh, that is a lovely purple. That's like a damson. Really, really like that. Gorgeous. If we had a bit more of this blue in. Yeah, that's lovely as well. Not got enough water on it, I don't think, but let's get a little bit more water, see what happens. Oh, that's lovely. So you can mix your own colours. So you know what I was saying about only get your basics and maybe one or two of the other sets because a lot of them are quite similar. Do that and then you can mix your own colours up. So you, you will have more colours than you initially start with if you use this mixing technique as well. So yeah, I'm quite impressed both by... Um, well, by all of it, really, apart from the, the tip to tip, but still it has its uses. Um, yeah, really, really good. I think they're a fantastic experimenting kind of pen. You can do an awful lot with them. You can do them on different surfaces, like I say, stone and things like that. You can do them as embellishments on top of pencil and colouring books. Um, you can do all your blending techniques and things like that. You can use water to, you know, mix and stuff. Yeah, they're really, really fun. And most importantly of all, the quality's there. So you have got a beautiful ink quality inside the pens. I say ink, it's a paint. Stop saying ink. Um, you've got the, the sheer build quality of the packaging as well. And it does actually serve a purpose and a function to keep those pens at tilt. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I've got to tell you. So as I mentioned at the start, you don't have to buy the whole master set. They have got each collection that you can buy individually. Uh, you'll know by now because I'll put it up on the screen whether or not you can get them as um, open stock, which hopefully you can. Um, and there are lots of different kind of sets and combinations that you can put together um, if you want to. So I'll leave all of the pertinent information and links and things in the description as usual. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I've missed. I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, hope you've enjoyed watching this. It's another long rambly one of mine. And um yeah, <laughs> that's what you come to expect on this channel, especially as I'm not doing videos as often nowadays. So I'm just not as as quick and um, literate as I usually am. <laughs> Put it that way. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. This was not a sponsored video. Didn't get paid to do this. They did send me the markers and they just said, I want to know your opinion. So there it is. Beautiful markers. Really, really great quality, both in the paint and the packaging. Too many of the markers, I think are very very similar so Karen if you can do something about that maybe bring in some supplement colours uh yeah there you go there's my opinion <laughs> thank you so much for watching and I will see you whenever it is next time on Colour with Claire